Hey, hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the vlog. Strap in, grab the safety tab, pull it twice to make sure you're locked in. This one's gonna get wild. If you enjoy, like and subscribe, please. Make sure you leave a comment because I have no idea how much that helps the video. Let's get to it. I wasn't gonna vlog today. Truth be told, I did not feel like putting in the effort of all the note taking and everything. But little did I know, I had stumbled upon the best poker table ever. Dan, who watches the vlog, is here at the table. He can confirm it. There was so much action in the first 30 minutes. Multiple all-ins, multiple $600 plus pots. I've already gotten paid off once when I flopped Broadway. So when the optimal vlogging seat opened up, I had to take my camera out and try to get some of this action. So we're about 40 minutes into the session and I'm already up $200. The guy to my right is a very loose, splashy player. We've played together before, so I'm really happy to have position on him. In the first hand of the night, we're in plus two and we look down at King Jack off suit. We see one limp before I bump it up to $12. We get calls from the cutoff, the small blind, and under the gun, so we're four ways to a flop. The flop is ace 10 4 rainbow, so I flopped a gut shot straight draw. It checks to me, and I'm gonna C bet this flop. I make it $35. It folds back to under the gun who calls, so we're heads up to the turn. The turn is a queen of diamonds, so it completes our straight and it brings in a diamond flush draw. It checks to me, and I'm going back and forth between checking and betting, and I decide going for some small value is the right play, and so I bet again for $55, a pretty small size. Under the gun snaps me off, so we're off to the river. The river is a king of hearts. It's kind of a gross card putting a four-liner on the board. Under the gun checks a third time, and I'm not really sure what I can get paid by except maybe a hand like two pair. I do know I can't lose the hand, so I am going to bet again, and I make it $120. I want to lay a really good price as opposed to going super large and my opponent folding a hand like two pair. My opponent doesn't think too long and he calls. I roll it over and he mucks immediately. I guess I could have gone larger on the river, but I wanted to ensure I got paid off, and I did. Under the gun says he had me beat on the turn, and he thinks I got there on the river, which obviously didn't happen, so who knows what the hell he's thinking or what he thinks he had in his hand, but I'm happy to be winning this one. We're in the small blind this time when we look down at pocket fours. It folds to plus one who makes it a dealer friendly $5, folds to the hijack who then three bets to $15. Then it folds over to the button who calls. I'm not folding a pair for $15, so I call. Folds back to the original razor who also calls, so we're four ways to the flop. The flop is queen four jack with two hearts. We flop bottom set. I start with a check. It checks over to the three better who continues, but only for $20. We then see a snap call from the button. So it's on me and this is a pretty connected board. And I've seen the turn in the river wreck some strong hands early in this session. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise now and I make it $65. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too strong of a move and they all fold, but we win again. I'll catch you later. I'm gonna push all in. We're in plus one and we look down at eight nine of hearts. We see under the gun limp before I bump it up to $12. I know eight nine suited is a little bit light to be raising from early position, but there's so much action at this table and I wanna get involved and start building pots now. It folds to the low jack who calls. Action's now on the button who then min clicks it to $25. We then see a call from the small blind. We also see a call from under the gun. So it's back on me and I call for $13 more as does the low jack. So we're five ways to a flop. The small blind checks dark as we head to a flop of king 9-4 with two spades, so I flop middle pair. It checks to me, I decide to check, and somehow it checks all the way through. The turn is a 10 of club, so it's connecting the board a little bit more. It checks to me again, and maybe I have the best of it here, so I fire for $45. Perhaps I can get value from a weaker pair, or I can represent a strong king. It folds to the small blind who counts it out and makes the call. Everybody else folds, so we're heads up to the river. The river is a nine of clubs, so it gives me trips. Queen Jack makes the obvious straight, but the flush draw does brick out. The small blind checks again, and now I'm pretty convinced I have the best of it. I went with a tiny bet when I had the straight in the first hand, so this time I'm gonna go with an over bet, trying to make it look like a bluff, and I fire for $245. The small blind folds before I can even get the bet out, and we're three for three so far. It's bomb pot time, $80 in the middle, and we head to two flops. The flop on the top board is Jack-9-6, all diamonds. The flop on the bottom board is Queen-7-9, rainbow. We're in the hijack, and we look down at Queen-7 off suit, so we don't really have anything on the top board, but we have two pair on the bottom. It checks all the way over to me, and I don't like the top board, but I feel pretty good about the bottom one, so I bet $50. 
It folds to the button who gets a little bit sticky and he calls. The big blind likes his hand and he calls as well. Everybody else folds, so we're three ways to the turn. The turn on the top board is a king of clubs. The turn on the bottom board is an ace of diamonds, so not a particularly great turn card on either board. It checks to me again, and I could check and just let this check through, but I wanna go ahead and get some value while I think I'm ahead on at least half this pot, so I bet $110. The button goes into the tank for a bit. Perhaps he has diamonds and he's considering a raise. He eventually settles on a call. The big blind folds, so now we're heads up. The river on the top board is a six of hearts, it pairs it. The river on the bottom board is a jack of hearts, so I don't improve on either board. I decide to slow down and check. I'm pretty sure we're chopping at this point, so I'm not sure how much sense it makes to bet. My opponent has about 225 behind. I'm probably gonna have to call if he shoves, but he actually checks behind. I roll my hand over and he shows 10-7 off suit for a missed straight draw on the top board and a pair of sevens on the bottom board, and somehow I scooped this entire thing. And my opponent wasn't calling a river bet, so I think I got max value on this hand. We've managed to turn our $300 buy-in into $1,200 in less than 90 minutes. If you enjoy playing poker against YouTubers, come out to Orange City Racing and Card Club on Saturday, July 15th at 1 p.m. to play in my meetup game with Kyle Fischl. It's a 1-3 no limit game with $10 double board bomb pots every dealer change. We've had good turnouts the last couple months we've done these. We've even been able to run multiple tables. So if you're in the Orlando area, come out on July 15th and try to make the vlog. We're straddling from the button in this hand and we look down at Jack-9 of diamonds. It folds to under the gun who min clicks it to $10. We then see calls from the low jack and the high jack. When the action gets to me, this feels like a really good squeeze spot and I bump it up to $55. It folds back to the low jack who looks like he has a decision and he calls. The hijack folds, so we're heads up. My opponent checks dark again as we head to a flop of king 3-3 three, three with two clubs. My opponent checked dark after flatting two pre-flop raises, so I don't think he's very strong and I don't really think it matters what's on the board. I think I can just win this with aggression and so I fire for $85 and he insta-mucks. This hand is going to escalate really quickly out of nowhere. The preflop details are fuzzy, but I'm in the big blind with ace deuce, and I think we're five ways to a flop. The flop is 822, so I flop trips. I think I checked looking for somebody to bet, but the action checked through. The turn is a nine of clubs, and the small blind leads for $15. I think there's merit to putting in a raise, but feeling I have this board pretty much locked up, I like to just flat. We're heads up to the river. The river is a four of diamonds, and my opponent's gonna bet again, this time for $25. Feeling like I have the best hand, I go for a little bit of value and I raise to $70. It's back on my opponent who jams for $1,000 total. What the fuck? My check of the flop makes me think I let a hand like nines or fours catch up. I'm looking over at the small blind who then starts laughing. <laughs> Obviously, I have a huge hand. That'll go kicking in for you. I don't know what the I just did. So while all this is going on, security then comes over to ask me why I'm recording at the table. Is it the recording? Talk to Aaron. So I have to tell him about the vlog and who I am and he eventually confirms that I'm telling the truth and now that we have all of that taken care of, what do I do here? I have a really good hand, but it's far from the nuts. I'm actually up out of my seat walking around trying to figure out what to do. I mean, I think this guy is crazy enough to do this with a worse two than mine, but hands like deuce four and deuce nine had me crushed. I've been in the tank for two and a half minutes and then I realized something. You know what? It's a lot less embarrassing to fold it and be wrong than to call it and be wrong. Show a bluff, you've wrecked my mind. Oh, he had a deuce too. Nice hand. Very nice hand. Or is that a full hand? Yeah. Deuce is full. Nice hand. Now looking back, I realized that while I was originally worried my flop check cost me, I think it actually saved me money. He wouldn't fold to a flop bet. It probably would have bloated the pot up. I probably would have fired, turned, and he'd call again. And it would have made the river a lot more complicated of a decision than it was. 
I can run through a lot of scenarios in my head where I would call against this particular player type. So it makes the fold even better for me. And I got a lot of credit for making that fold. So I'll ask you, was it a really great fold or just kind of what I was supposed to do? So by this point, the drinks had really been flowing. And I'll just kind of show you an example of how wild and weird this table was. We're in the low jack and we look down at pocket sevens. It calls all the way around to the small blind who then bumps it up to $10. Actions on the big blind who then re-raises to $20. We see a call from plus one. It's on me and I call looking to hit a set. The cutoff also calls. It's back to the button who calls. So action gets all the way back to the small blind who then raises again, but only to $50. We see calls from the big blind and plus one. So it's on me and I briefly consider another raise, but no one seems to be in a folding mood. So I just call. The cutoff calls as does the button. So we're six ways to a flop with $300 in the middle at a one, two table. The flop is queen 10 deuce with two hearts and the small blind wastes no time shoving for about $200. Then the big blind immediately calls for about $200. It folds over to me, and while that's happening, the big blind shows the small blind his cards, which isn't a big deal since they're both all in, but he gave the button a look too. The dealer really feels that everybody needs to have the same info that the button might have, and eventually the big blind rolls over king nine of hearts for a gut shot straight flush draw. Then the button starts calling out what he thinks people have with three of us still left to act. No, he's got aces, you got that, I got a set of queens. My decision really isn't that hard, but there's a lot of money in the middle. Eventually I make the fold, which is the right thing to do. Action of the cutoff who then reveals he has pocket jacks, but the button still has to act. Apparently this table is just doing whatever the f they want. The button folds and so the small blind has aces and it's a race. The turn's a nine of diamonds, so the big blind picks up a few more outs. The river of four of diamonds and the small blind wins a really big, weird pot. I'm excited to take a moment and tell you about a new partnership I have. I've joined the Club GG platform to play in a brand new poker club, Club ETP. They're offering games at 25, 50 cent, 50 cent a dollar, and one dollar, two dollar blinds. This club offers lots of action, quick deposits and payouts, and features other vloggers, including Kyle Fischel. In fact, Kyle has been live streaming playing in the 1-2 game on Monday nights. Oh, seven card flush replied. He said he'll be joining these games real soon, so... If you'd like to play with him, he will be here. Claimed by him, so. I'll be hosting my first game on the platform Wednesday, July 12th at 6 p.m. I'll be playing 25, 50 cent, and 50 cent a dollar. I'll be looking to turn one of these games into a live stream of my own in the near future. So, if you're interested in joining, here's what you need to do. Download the Club GG app on your phone or your computer. Join Club ETP, which is club number 760491. Use referral code 777. Then contact me on Instagram or on Telegram and let me know you're ready to start playing poker. I guess, I guess that's how it works. Again, you can join me on Wednesday, July 12th to play 25, 50 cent and 50 cent $1 on Club ETP on the Club GG platform. We're in plus one and we look down at pocket nines. It folds over to me and I bump it up to $15. We see calls from the hijack, the cutoff, and the big blind, so we're four ways to a flop. The flop is 988, so we flop top full house. The big blind checks it over to me. I check hoping someone will bet, but unfortunately it checks through. The turn's a four heart, so now it brings in a flush draw. The big blind checks again and I've got to start getting some value, so I fire for $20. I get calls from a late position player and the big blind, so we're three ways to the river. The river is an ace of diamonds, and I'm not sure if this is a good card or a bad card. The big blind checks, and I've got a bet again, so I do this time for $65. I'm hoping I can get called by an ace X of hearts hand, but unfortunately both players fold and we win a small one. I met a vlog watcher while I was at the bar, Justin, really nice guy who's enjoying the content. I always appreciate when people come up and say hello. Makes me feel like a little mini celebrity. About an hour of folding happens before I'm in plus two and I look down at pocket sixes. Again, the pre-flop details are fuzzy, but we're five ways to a flop with 25 in the middle. The flop is eight, seven deuce rainbow. It checks to me and I know I didn't raise pre-flop, so I think it's actually a good flop for me as I can have all the straight draws and all the sets and all the middle pocket pairs just like the one I have. So I continue for $20. The low jack is the only caller, so we're heads up to the turn. The turn's a five of diamonds, so now I've picked up an open-ended draw to go with my pair. I'm going to keep telling my story that I've got a good hand, and this time I fire for $80, but he folds before I can even get it out, and I win this one. Poker vlogger Corey Ehring put out a vlog a couple weeks ago talking about how poker vlogs are a lie. 
He had some decent points. For instance, you don't see every single hand of every single session I play. That would just take absolutely way too much work to try to not only play it, but then put it all together for you while making it interesting. But Corey kind but, of insinuated that vloggers hide losses from you and that they only show you the highlights of things. And if there's one thing I think I've tried to do well on this vlog, it's have full transparency, show you not only the good and not only the bad. And this next hand is a really good example of a hand that I could have hidden from everybody, but I'm going to put it in the vlog so you guys can see it and then we can talk about it. I'm in under the gun and I look down at pocket eights. Once again, I don't have the preflop details. Sorry, I told you guys I didn't want to vlog, but we appear to be five ways to a flop with about 75 bucks in the middle. The flop is king eight seven with two hearts, so I flop middle set. It checks to me and there's no way I'm giving a free card on this board, so I bet $60. It folds over to the low jack who makes the call. I also get a call from the big blind, so we're three ways to the turn. The turn is a nine of hearts. It's a gross card as every draw in the world gets there. And the big blind now leads for $200. It's on me and this just feels so gross. I still have the low jack to act behind and he's got about 350 total in front of him. If I were heads up with the big blind, I think a call would be fine, but if I call, I'm just inviting the low jack to shove. But I don't want to shove myself as the low jack could very well have a made hand that's better than mine. I think this is a clear fold, but it's $200 to win 450-ish. Any board pairing card and I know I'll be good. I also think the big blind is capable of making this play with ace king with the ace of hearts. In the end, I end up calling. The action's over to the low jack and he stands up. He grabs his stacks and then he jams all in for 340 total and the big blind snap calls. So now I know I'm behind, but it's another 140 to win over $1,100 and I could be ahead of the big blind and take down a side pot. So I kind of reluctantly call just praying for the board to pair. The river is a five of spades. So the board does not pair and the big blind leads out for $350. So now this is a clear fold, but I go into the tank. I still think there's a chance the big blind plays ace king with the ace of hearts the exact same way, or maybe a hand like king nine. I know I can't be good here, but I just can't bring myself to fold and I end up making the call. The big blind shows jack 10 of diamonds for the straight and the low jack shows jack 10 of hearts for the flush. During the hand, I thought about too many variables like hand ranges and pot odds and I forgot the most basic rule of poker. At 1-2, when someone shoves the turn and then gets snapped, one of them is not bluffing. I had a lot of chances to get away from this hand, and I just ended up compounding a few bad decisions that ended up costing me about $800. I know I'm not the strongest poker player. I know I make too many bad decisions, but one thing you can never accuse me of is hiding things on my vlog. So take that, Corey Ehring. Another double board bomb pot. We're in the big blind with ace jack off suit. There's 80 bucks in the middle and we head to two flops. Flop on the top board is jack four deuce rainbow and the flop on the bottom board is jack 10 eight rainbow. So I flop top pair on both boards. So when it checks to me, I'm gonna start getting money in there and I bet $60. I get called in two spots. So we're three ways to the turn. The turn on the top board is a seven of clubs. Doesn't change much. The turn on the bottom board is a seven of hearts. So now it puts a four liner on the board. So I'm probably not good there anymore. I only have $90 left and I still feel good about the top board, so I rip it. The hijack wastes no time in calling. The button takes a little bit longer with his decision, but he calls, so let's hope we get some good rivers. The river on the top board is a six of diamond, so doesn't help me. The river on the bottom board is a nine of spades, so it completes the straight on the bottom board, which might actually be a good thing since I wasn't sure I was good there after the turn. The hijack checks, but the button decides he won't check and he bets $100 and he gets snapped off by the hijack. The hijack shows 10 seven of diamonds for what was a pair on the top and turned two pair on the bottom that got counterfeit by the straight. The button shows jack six of hearts for a river two pair on the top. So the button gets the top board and we split the bottom board three ways. So my read was right. I was best on the top board and technically the bottom board after the flop, but I end up only getting a small piece back. I didn't hold on to that small piece very long as I got it all in with a gut shot on an 873 with two hearts board. I did not make my straight and after four hours, I found myself with no chips in front of me. A little frustrated with my play, I decided to wrap it up. I recorded a very tilted outro before getting in my car and heading home and I treated myself to a 45 minute drive home in silence. But it gave me a lot of time to think about how things went and what I could have done differently.
So, now that I'm back home, and I've had a lot of time to think about it, the pocket eights is just a fold, 100% of the time. Um, especially when he's leading the turn and there's a guy behind me to act. I just, I need to be able to get away from it there. Uh, I made such a good fold with the ace deuce with trips. Um, I had the chance to make two really good folds and I just, I didn't do it. So luckily only into the game for 300, but out for zero. So if you enjoy, like, subscribe, leave a comment about what you do in the pocket eight hands. It'll allow me to, to study what my play was and it will help the video. So we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more poker content. And you can follow me on Instagram at 7cardflushpoker.